On day four, I originally had this very ambitious plan to wake up, drive the whole dingle loop, stopping along the way at like 10 plus locations, then drive up to Bunratty Castle for a five o'clock show I had tickets for. Very ambitious indeed. I had to make sacrifices and the choices were difficult, but I had to be realistic. At this point in my trip, I was confident enough to drive in Ireland, but driving along the coast down those windy roads really freaked me out. And I had been in Ireland for days and had yet to see the ocean. So I decided to make the trip to Dingle, but only stay for a brief time and then spend some time at one of the beaches in the area. at Inch Beach. I hopped in the car, drove down the beach, and held on tight hoping for the best and embarked on the remainder of the drive to Dingle. With its narrow, windy, often cliffside roads, I was certainly white knuckling it a lot of the time, especially the way that huge tour buses just come flying at you, but it was worth it. I spent some time browsing in all the many shops and even found this beautiful little silver triketra necklace that I treasure. Before I knew it, I had to begin my drive to Bunratty, otherwise I'd miss the show I was so excited to see. Hello. Before I knew about the dinner theater, I chose Bunratty Castle because of its ties to Richard Declare and Brian Boru. The castle that exists today was built by the McNamara family around 1425. Eventually, it became the stronghold of the Earls of Thamond. 
But before that, there was a settlement of Northmen that was destroyed by Brian Boru in 977. Then in 1250, a Mott and Bailey castle, then Thomas de Clare, a descendant of Strongbow, built a castle on the site. In 1284, when Thomas was away in England, the O'Briens attacked the castle several times. So it was destroyed when he got back. He rebuilt it, bigger and better, but then in 1318, Thomas and his son Richard were killed in battle. And legend has it, the day before his death, Richard saw a woman dressed in white by the river washing bloody clothing and armor. He asked her who the clothes belonged to, and she said, yours, and then vanished. It's believed she was a banshee for telling his death. When his wife heard the news that they were dead, she set fire to the castle and town and then sailed for England. When the Irish arrived, they found devastation. A chronicler at the time said it was deserted, empty, wrapped in fire, from which time to this never one of the breed of Declare has come back to claim it. That castle eventually collapsed and was probably used as building materials for other structures in the area, and nothing remains of it today. So if you are planning on going to Ireland, go to Bunratty Castle. I went to the medieval banquet and it was seriously one of my favorite things I did on my trip. The dinner takes place in the great hall of a real medieval castle. The food was fabulous. You eat it as though you would have back in the day with no cutlery. And during the evening, you are treated to incredible musical performances of traditional Irish songs. I was so impressed. The performers played their parts so well and the songs were performed so beautifully. Throughout the evening, they even crowned a king and sent a dinner guest to the dungeon. I met some wonderful people and we went for a drink across the road at a bar called Dirty Nellie's, of which we have one in Halifax when the dinner was done. Until that point, I hadn't really had much contact with people on my travels. Traveling solo is a wonderful experience, but it was so lovely meeting other people and sharing a really fun experience. It was definitely a top highlight of my time in Ireland. Down by the Sally Gardens is one of my favorite traditional Irish songs. It was stuck in my head for the rest of my trip, and since I got back, I still find myself humming this song. So I will end with this. Down by the Sally Gardens, my love and I did me. She passed the Sally Gardens with little snow white feet. She bid me to take my feet as a leaf.